So, hi and welcome back to Night Hacking from Eurodev. And we have a new speaker here, Oskar Wickström. So, Oskar, thanks for joining. And could thanks. you briefly um, introduce yourself and what talk you have here at the, um, at the Eurodev conference? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so I work with uh, Haskell as a profession mm -hmm. and um, for a company in the US right now, remotely from, from Sweden. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, almost since I started programming, I started out more as a sort of uh, web front-end developer mm -hmm. and, and the web stack with originally like PHP, but then Java and, and uh, other languages and JavaScript and so on. But I've al always, almost since the start, been looking at Haskell mm -hmm. with you know, one eye uh, towards right. Haskell right. in this way. It, it, it just clicked for me pretty early and I felt like this uh, gravitation mm -hmm. pulling to, towards Haskell for mm -hmm. some reason. I don't I think I've uh, more recently found that it's something that it clicks with how I think about problems mm -hmm. and problem solving and, and uh, sort of getting my thoughts down to code. It, it fits okay. my thinking well. It's your mental model, how you think so. Okay. Yeah, so it is like the, the least resistance to get your stuff right. into to code, right? Uh -huh. um, so, and then like over the, the past few years, I've, I've moved into working with it professionally as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm I'm here to, to talk about doing domain modeling with Haskell and its data types. So DDD or domain driven mm -hmm. design has been on my radar for a very long time as well. and during all this time I've tried to apply Haskell in that setting right which I mean DDD is not so much about technical stuff it's th there are the uh, what are they called um, the tactical design decisions right but then you have the, the larger strategic design decisions which are the, the most important ones I think um, and it doesn't really matter like which mm -hmm. language you use but uh, I find Haskell to be very nice in the tactical setting. So. Okay so this maps well um, with the DDD approach and with I would say a more real-world usage for um, for ad applications right? for because uh, mm. DDD in general is like very uh, I would say uh, not pragmatic, but practical yeah. um, to use for real world projects and how to how to solve problems, right? Yeah. So, what's your experience? How well that works uh, in a Haskell world? So the the thing that's nice I find about about Haskell is that you can take your your domain rules mm -hmm. and and the concepts and really put them into data types. Okay. Um, in like as opposed to having your logic sort of spread out over functions mm -hmm. where stuff is like more. Uh, implicitly modeled or, or more ephemeral yeah. in, in a sense. Yeah. You can a bit more strictly encode it in a data type and then you have this both for documentation you can see that there's a name for this thing mm -hmm. and, and it's structured in a certain way but also you get a lot of benefits from Haskell the language and its base library and the um, functional abstractions that you have uh, to work with data types in generic ways mm -hmm. and then you can sort of reuse that but in the context of your domain. So mm -hmm. you can, things like uh, traversing data structures or mapping over them or collapsing them into single values or like these common yes. common ways you work with data, you mm -hmm. can do that on your domain objects very, mm -hmm. um, like you get that for free and you have these common idioms on how to do that. So I found that really powerful and that's really what my talk is about. Okay, so that, that sounds like it allows you even, even more flexibility uh, to put more functionality with it uh, into the domain models uh, already the domain entities mm. as opposed to um, m more um, more uh, widely used uh, object oriented programming language yeah I guess um, like the first step you can do is to take the nouns of your domain mm -hmm. sort of and put them into records or classes or whatever what yeah. have you in your language right, right. right yeah and then you've, you've you've come some way but mm -hmm. then you also have like all the behavior and the, the processes and the mm -hmm. rules that are not like person with first name and last name right but something harder to model as mm -hmm. a, a as a data type but if you can get more of those things also as data types that you can describe um, computation as a data type mm -hmm. uh, then you have more information as data types and I, I think especially with Haskell you you leverage uh, a lot more of the type system and the compiler if you have uh, these things as data types because like as usual you know the requirements change and the system has to evolve and then you can change the data type that really maps to the thing that you wanted to, like the requirement that, that actually changed, right? 
you have a very natural place to start mm -hmm. because you have your sort of rules and your uh, domain concepts and 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 um, computations represented in this um, sort of declarative or mm -hmm. canonical way and then you can go in and make that change and see what the compiler says about it it's like okay maybe you have to pattern match mm -hmm. differently or mm -hmm. maybe you're missing some case there or ma maybe this doesn't align up anymore so right. um, i find that really useful because you have more of your rules and your mm -hmm. knowledge in, in this sort of machine checkable yeah. format um, so yeah it makes a lot of sense so um what i also find very interesting is that you produce educational videos on specifically on haskell yeah and make them available online right? so oh. what was your motivation to to share that to produce these yeah good question um i think it's a, a mixed bag of of various observations mm -hmm. and um, experiences i was very inspir uh, inspired by um, the uh, destroy all software screencasts mm -hmm. by Gary Bernard. Mm -hmm. I find them really concise and, and well planned and, and nice to, to watch. Uh, and his, you know, the general style of them. Uh, and for for Haskell, I like there weren't that many screencasts and, and video yeah, materials. I was just about to ask. There's probably not that much material out there, right? Right. Th th there's actually coming more right now, <laughs> like uh, the, the last year. Um, so, so you started a trend <laughs> maybe i didn't start <laughs> it but uh, i was maybe part of it at mm -hmm. least yeah uh so th there's a couple more and um but but yeah i've, I've ha uh, had this ideal of of like what i think they should be like or mm -hmm. w what i like mm -hmm. watching then I, then I wanted to make that myself right. that are these short sort of fast-paced concise uh like under 10 minutes is the goal oh, yeah rather five if, if possible right. but it's it's hard to get it down to five but you know uh, make them short mm -hmm. and really just um not not necessarily fast but you know i ha i don't find the time to to uh, watch people live code for like five uh, mm -hmm. five hours yeah, straight yeah. or even two hours oh, yeah likewise <laughs> yeah so uh, and i think that many people also have that problem that they they maybe need something on the I bus so or too, whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah, like on the way to work, you can just pick up your phone and there's a new 10-minute video. You can right. you can yeah, do that quickly. Easy to watch and you get a lot of uh, knowledge in a short or rather short amount of time. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah exactly. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, so uh, speaking of uh, sh uh, sharing knowledge, so since uh, we're here at the Eurodev conference, uh, what is your motivation to specifically attend um, and speak on this um, very conference here? So uh, I was actually... A part of the program committee here mm -hmm. for uh two years okay um, and that was two years ago and so so i've been part of this conference before but right. in a different uh, role mm -hmm. uh, and i've uh, always loved this conference it's it's great like it's it's very broad it has many different topics it's like That's agile great. and 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 enterprise software and testing and qa and and bio also these in bio VR <laughs> right yeah and new things future <laughs> yeah future very sort of visionary uh, right. and and also these uh um you know experimental languages mm -hmm. or lesser known languages right. at least uh, usually has this track as well and i was a part of that um uh, sort of uh, functional programming mm -hmm. or alternative non-mainstream languages yes. and stuff like that. Ma it makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, so I've always been drawn to this conference, and mm -hmm. and now I thought I had this after doing the um, these videos, uh, because my talk is based on four of those videos, a uh, mm -hmm. small series. Okay. Yeah. And um, I thought that that would actually fit very well with Erdev. I hope because it's sort of I the intersection between domain driven design and, and the, the sort of practical setting of doing your everyday sort of business software and haskell which mm -hmm. i really like um, talking about so i found this to to maybe apply well to to Erdo. very cool so we will share uh, your resources on your uh, material uh, with the watchers as well and yeah this sounds very interesting and maybe it's a motivation to uh, you folks to attend the Erdo, uh conference uh, one day if you haven't so already so mm. oscar thanks a lot for the interview and for taking the time and for everybody watching well thanks for watching thank bye. you bye